it does amaze me the lengths that players will go to. Well, in fact, the truth was far stranger and more shocking than any fiction. In the afternoon, in the hours before the, the final, Roberto Carlos wakes up with Ronaldo having seizures. He goes running to call the, the team doctor and, and the other people because he thought the guy was actually dying. When Brazil's players took to the field, there was real concern for their star man. A lot of the players have said, listen, we were terrified of him having something on the pitch. Roberto Carlos was actually afraid of Ronaldo dying. I don't think Ronaldo was any different from the rest. I thought they all played like they'd fainted that morning. Next up, it's a real signal. Indeed, Peter, a right little winker. In 2006, England had a chance of winning the World Cup, and his name was Wayne Rooney. However, in the quarterfinals, there was another player as good as Rooney, but he played for Portugal, and his name was Cristiano Ronaldo. They were teammates back in Manchester, the best of friends, although they made a very odd couple. You got a friend. They were made for each other. It's so good because I think they're just completely the two polar opposites of men. Like one of them is the modern metrosexual complexion of an air hostess, and the other one is this, this big ginger ball of testosterone. Like one wouldn't look out of place in a trendy bar in between a cosmopolitan and a copy of Vogue. The other one wouldn't look out of place on a wall chart in between Homo habilis and Homo erectus. You got a friend. But at the World Cup, friendship was put aside, even before the match had kicked off. He knows Wayne Rooney, and, you know, he's told his, his mates and whatever, you know what I mean, we can get him. With the scores at nil-nil, we were all hoping that Rooney was going to squash Portugal's tender dreams. But instead, he tried to squash Carvalho's tender parts. <laughs> Rooney. The referee, if you look at it, wasn't going to send Rooney off. It was only when his Manchester United teammate, Cristiano Ronaldo, came along and he was all like this, he was all like this, he was like, send him off, send him off. And the referee has gone to his pocket, it's red! These guys, they know what they're doing and they, he knows Rooney's weeks what, he knows what's going to make him tick, he knows what's going to get him sent off. Did the Portuguese try to wind Wayne up? Maybe. Did they get him sent off? It's a fact. Ronaldo had betrayed a friend and sent England out. But far, far worse was to come. The wink was like, you know, I got him. Do you know what I mean? But I felt like he got me too. Do you know what I mean? Like, we all felt like he got us. I mean, I absolutely couldn't say what I was shouting at the TV. Everyone in the room was fuming. They were just like, I can't believe he's done that. Oh, my God. I could have just put my foot through the TV. He winked. He winked. It even got the boys in the studio worked up. Look at that. Has he just winked there? Hey, please tell me no. I think there's every chance that Wayne Rooney could go back to the Man United training ground and stick one on Ronaldo. Oh, no. But while the nation worked itself into a lava, Ronaldo didn't see what all the fuss was about. I say, referee, this is its fault, but I don't say red card because Rooney, it's my, it's my friend. Whatever you say, Ron. Yeah. Although we might like to think we are, we're not Germany's biggest rivals. It's this lot. The whole of Germany must be the, I would say, the most bitter rivalry in Europe. Germany-Holland has been a grudge match for a long, long time. And their clash in Milan in 1990 lived up to its billing. Even the ref got involved. And he's determined to stamp his authority, isn't he? Probably one of the worst ugliest scenes in, in World Cup history. The shirts are ugly, the haircuts are ugly, the facial hair is terrible. But even more shocking than that was what Dutch midfielder Frank Rijkaard did to German striker Rudy Voller. Following a little playground spat, Rijkaard came back with a spit. 
did he, did he spit at Volner as he ran past? Was that my imagination? Let's hope so. It was just one of the most disgusting things I think that's ever been caught on camera. It was a full projectile gob. It's absolutely gross. There is no worse way to insult a German than to spit in his mullet. Well, there is. You do it twice. Well, there was no doubt about it then. Reichardt spat on Voller as he walked past him, and that Bobby is atrocious. The mullet was so thick, it takes Voller a couple of seconds to actually realise, I mean, he's, uh, he's spat in my hair. I thought he was going to kill him. I thought at that moment he was going to kill him. Then he saw how big Reichardt is, and he thought, nah. Well, spitting is horrible. But spitting in a mullet, Vorsprung dog, not good news. <laughs> What's that, Pete? It's the hand of dog. Poor, Peter. Very poor. All right. It's the poor of dog. No, it's the, here's the hand of God. The 22nd of June, 1986, and the Azteca Stadium in Mexico provides the backdrop for what nobody can deny is one of the World Cup's greatest ever shocks. It's a bizarre moment, really, um, but I always remember the big shadow. The big what? The star-shaped ball. This star-shaped shadow uh, in the centre of the pitch all the time in the main stadium and thinking, where's that come from? How have they managed to do that? It was, in fact, a piñata, a traditional Mexican decoration on which the organisers hung the stadium speakers, presumably for announcements such as, look out, he's going to cheat. The Hannah God goal was the singly the most ridiculous goal of all time. I, mean, I just remember being absolutely gobsmacked by it. This wasn't fair. Dad, this isn't fair. Why is this happening? Just minutes into the second half, Argentina's Diego Maradona shocked the world by proving that he was an exceptionally handy player. Why did you do it? Why did you do that thing? Everyone saw the hand straight away. I mean, on the bench, we all saw it. As Peter Shilton went to punch it, we saw him go up and we saw his hand come up and we saw him flick his head but his hand... And we saw him run away, but people do that. He looked back when he ran away, expecting the free kick. The big thing from his point of view was obviously the fact that he, he celebrated as though it was a legitimate goal. And we just thought, well, the referee's going to give a free kick. Millions of people all over the world saw what happens, but sadly, not the person who mattered most. It was the first time, sort of on live TV with a worldwide audience that someone had blatantly cheated. Was it a use of the hand that England are complaining about? Well, certainly his arm was up. Peter Shilton protested immediately. Sometimes things happen. It's inexplicable how on earth a referee could miss that. We just couldn't believe that the, the referee or the linesman didn't see it. Which was sheer frustration that, um, that the referee and the linesman hadn't done their job properly, hadn't seen it, and that in a World Cup quarter final was just unacceptable. On the subject of people not doing the jobs properly. Short people got no reason. I don't know how Peter Shilton gets outpunched by a midget. He was the man of the tournament. He was the guy that you should really know, and you should know he's not that tall. He leapt like a a, a salmon. He outlet Shilton. It was incredible. How did this happen? You know, he's, he's four foot three. Like, Maradona! Afterwards, Maradona said it was a little with the head of Maradona and a little with the hand of God. But England's players and fans were left wanting to give him a somewhat less divine bunch of fives. Maradona should have got a punch in the face from somebody on the field. Peter, tell me honestly, would you ever do anything as nasty and low-down dirty as that just to win in South Africa? Oh, yeah. Don't worry about that. Good. I was hoping you'd say that. It went crazy. I didn't think that it would go that... I mean, I knew that people wouldn't be happy, but I never knew that it would go that bad. There was much rioting on the streets. It was really quite ugly for months afterwards. He should never have done it. He should never, ever have done it. He should never have kicked out. And to be fair... He's cost us the World Cup, hasn't he? In the summer of 1998, one man stood above all others as the most hated in England. 
He wasn't a murderer, a serial killer, or even Piers Morgan. But when David Beckham got sent off at the World Cup in France, it was such a shock that in the eyes of an angry nation, he became public enemy number one.